Welcome to another captivating journey with We Are Saintly Saint of the Day series. In this video, we embark on a soul-enriching journey into the profound prayers of St. John Chrysostom. Join us in this sacred exploration as we unveil the timeless words that echo through centuries, carrying the wisdom and devotion of this revered saint. Whether you're a devout believer, a seeker of spiritual enlightenment, or simply curious about the prayers of St. John Chrysostom that have withstood the test of time, this video is your sanctuary. Let's get started. The beautiful and profound prayers of St. John Chrysostom have nourished Christian souls for over 1,500 years. These prayers of St. John Chrysostom, though ancient in origin, still offer much meaning and comfort to believers today. There is an enduring power in their poetic words that transcends time and place. The prayers of St. John Chrysostom transport us back to the early Byzantine church era, yet the petitions they contain resonate with the same intimacy and sincerity now as then. In this video, I want to explore these timeless prayers, both their history and their continued relevance. We'll look at how the prayers of St. John Chrysostom emerged, their role in Orthodox liturgy and personal devotion, and why Christians across denominations and centuries have valued these short but spiritually rich prayers. There is always more depth to plumb in prayers that generations have preserved and cherished. My hope is that through studying the prayers of St. John Chrysostom you'll find fresh inspiration from these ancient words and a strengthened connection to the wider body of Christ that has treasured these petitions aloud through the ages. Let's begin by looking back at who St. St. John Chrysostom was, so we can better understand the context behind these beautiful prayers. Who was St. John Chrysostom? St. John Chrysostom was one of the most influential early church fathers and saints. He lived in the 4th century Ad and served as the Archbishop of Constantinople from 398 up until his death in 407. St. John got the epithet Chrysostom which means golden-mouthed in Greek because of his eloquent and impactful preaching. He is known for his sermons and extensive writings on theology and Christian living. Over 800 of his homilies have survived today, more than any other church father. St. John Chrysostom is recognized as a saint in Eastern Orthodox, Catholic, Anglican, and Lutheran churches. He is renowned for his insights and to scripture, advocacy for social justice, and talent for preaching. St. John Chrysostom is considered one of the three holy hierarchs in Eastern Orthodoxy along with St. Basil the Great and St. Gregory of Nazianzus. Some key facts about St. John Chrysostom's life include, born around 349 at an Antioch in the Roman Empire, which is in modern-day Turkey, studied rhetoric under the pagan teacher Libanius, baptized as an adult around 367 at and then became an ascetic monk, ordained as a deacon in 381 at and a priest in 386 at in Antioch, appointed as Archbishop of Constantinople in 398 at by Emperor Arcadius, died in exile from Constantinople on September 14, 407 at. St. John Chrysostom was a pivotal leader in the early church, especially renowned for his impactful homilies and speeches aimed at inspiring Christians in their faith and practice. When did St. John Chrysostom live? As mentioned in the previous section, St. John Chrysostom lived during the 4th and early 5th centuries at. He was born around 349 AD in the city of Antioch, which was part of the late Roman Empire. Some key dates in St. John Chrysostom's life include 349 AD born in Antioch in the Roman Empire, 367 AD baptized as a Christian at age 18, 381 AD ordained as a deacon in Antioch, 386 AD ordained as a priest in Antioch, 398 AD appointed as Archbishop of Constantinople at age 49, 403 AD deposed from Archbishop position on false charges. 404 Ad forcibly removed from Constantinople and sent into exile. 407 Ad died in exile from illness and exhaustion at age 58. So in summary, St. John Chrysostom lived during an important transitional time for the Roman Empire and the Christian Church in the late 4th and early 5th centuries Ad. He lived to age 58 and served as a priest and influential church leader in Antioch and Constantinople during his lifetime. St. John Chrysostom's writings and theology were foundational for both the Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches. He is considered the most prolific and influential of the early Greek church fathers. 
What are the prayers of St. John Chrysostom? The prayers of St. John Chrysostom are a set of three prayers that are traditionally used in many Orthodox, Catholic, and Anglican worship services and private devotional practices. These three prayers are 1. The prayer before Holy Communion 2. The prayer after Holy Communion 3. The prayer before reading scripture The prayers of St. John Chrysostom are attributed to him, but some scholars believe they may have been composed later by others to honor him. Regardless of exact authorship, these prayers have been passed down in St. John's name for over 1,500 years. They are short yet profound petitions focused on requesting God's guidance, illumination, and discernment, especially those related to partaking in communion, reading scripture, and deepening one's spiritual life in Christ. These famous prayers of St. John Chrysostom capture his spirituality and love for Christ in a concise yet poignant way. Many find their repetition helpful in focusing the mind and heart in worship and personal devotion. What is the history and background of these prayers? The prayers of St. John Chrysostom emerged as an important liturgical tradition in the Orthodox, Catholic, and Anglican churches between the 5th and 8th centuries at. The prayer before Holy Communion and the prayer after Holy Communion are the oldest and most established of the set. Various records show these two prayers were already in regular use in worship services by the 6th century at. The prayer before scripture reading developed a little later, perhaps during the 8th century at. This prayer quickly gained the same popularity and status as the other two. Various ancient manuscripts and liturgical books throughout the Middle Ages contain and make reference to the prayers of St. John Chrysostom as accepted and valued traditions. While the exact origins are uncertain, the prayers reflect the spirituality and concerns of St. John and other early Greek theologians. The communion prayers connect closely to early Christian worship practices that developed in the first centuries after Christ. So in summary, the prayers of St. John Chrysostom have ancient roots that develop during the Christological controversies and growth of liturgical worship traditions in the early Byzantine era of Christianity. They remain treasured traditions over 1,500 years later. What are the different types or sections of the prayers of St. John Chrysostom? The prayers of St. John Chrysostom consist of three distinct prayers focused on preparation for communion, thanksgiving after communion, and enlightenment when reading scripture. The three parts or types of prayers are prayer before Holy Communion, asks God for unity with Christ through communion and forgiveness forgiveness of sins, prayer after Holy Communion, thanks God for permitting participation in the sacred mysteries and requests aid in remaining in Christ, prayer before reading scripture, requests illumination, pure thoughts, and discernment from studying scripture. Each prayer follows a similar pattern but with distinct content and petitions related to their specific purpose within the Orthodox liturgy and personal piety. The prayer before communion and the prayer after communion are the most commonly used pair. The prayer before scripture reading sometimes accompanies the other two but can also stand alone as a prayer before studying or encountering the Bible. These three prayers cover key spiritual themes surrounding preparation, participation, and reflection on communion and studying scripture within the Christian faith. What themes and topics are covered in these prayers? The prayers of St. John Chrysostom touch on a few important spiritual themes and topics common to early Byzantine Christianity, communion, all three prayers connect to the Eucharist and Holy Communion, asking for preparation, blessing, and discernment in taking part in this sacrament. Forgiveness of sins, the prayers ask God for mercy, forgiveness, and cleansing from sins. Unity with Christ, there is a repeated request to grow closer to Christ in unity through communion. Discernment, the prayers ask God for spiritual discernment and wisdom in understanding scripture and the truths of the faith. Illumination, a petition for God to illuminate the mind and heart is present in the prayers. Unworthiness, the prayers emphasize human imperfection and not deserve such blessings from God. Pure thoughts, one prayer asks God to allow and enable the reader to hold to pure thoughts. Guidance, the requests emphasize seeking God's guidance and truth rather than one's own limited faculties. These prayers offer beautiful insights into historic Christian beliefs about communion, scripture, sin and redemption through Christ's grace and illumination. How widely used are these prayers in Orthodox worship services? The prayers of St. John Chrysostom are very widely used and included consistently in the divine liturgy services of the Eastern Orthodox Church. They are traditionally included in the following settings, before and after the distribution of Holy Communion to the faithful, after the priest's communion, when he consumes the Eucharist, after reading the gospel during matins and other services when scripture is proclaimed, during private prayers before an individual reads scripture, especially the Psalms, included sparingly during Vespers, Prime, Compline and other liturgical services, recommended for the priest to use silently before he starts ministering at the altar during the Prosco Media. The prayers of St. John Chrysostom are therefore recited very frequently throughout the week during regular Orthodox worship services. The laity hears these prayers surrounding communion at every divine liturgy. Their use is 
widespread across all Orthodox jurisdictions and traditions, though some slight variations may exist in different regional bodies. But as a whole, these prayers of St. John are universally cherished and used. What translations of the prayers of St. John Chrysostom are available? Because the prayers of St. John Chrysostom are used so widely, they have been translated from the original Greek into many different languages for global Orthodox Christian worship. Some of the more common languages include English, many translations into poetic English exist, Russian, used in the Russian Orthodox Church, Greek, the original language still used, Arabic, used by Antiochian and Coptic Orthodox Churches, Romanian, used by the Romanian Orthodox Church, Amharic, used by Ethiopian and Eritrean Orthodox, Spanish, translations for missions and converts in Latin America, Korean, used by the Korean Orthodox Church, Japanese, used by the Japanese Orthodox Church. Having these prayers available in contemporary vernacular translations allows worshippers around the world to utilize them, while still maintaining the original theology and intent. The English translation from Greek is very common for worldwide use since it gives a middle ground between ancient and modern phrasing. However, ultimately the prayers unite Orthodox Christians globally regardless of the language prayed in. How can I incorporate these prayers of St. John Chrysostom into my personal prayer life? Because the prayers of St. John Chrysostom are so steeped in cherished Orthodox traditions, they make for a meaningful way of personal prayer life even outside of formal church services. Here are some suggestions for how an individual could start praying these regularly. Pray the prayer before reading scripture before reading your daily Bible verses or doing a Bible study session. Use the prayer before communion and prayer after communion when partaking of the Eucharist during divine liturgy or saving some to commune at home. Recite the prayer after communion after taking sacramental wine and bread even if communing at home rather than church. Read through the prayer slowly and meditatively during your private prayer time. Focus on one prayer for several weeks until you commit it to memory through frequent repetition. Find recordings of the prayers being recited to learn traditional Orthodox chant melodies. Read the prayers aloud with members of your family during times of family prayer. Use the prayer before sleep by reciting it from memory after saying your evening prayers. These examples demonstrate just a few of the many possibilities. With some creativity, timeless prayers can enrich a personal devotional life. Learning about our Catholic saints and church history will deepen your faith so much. Prayer is also such an important aspect of growing in your faith. Meditating on the gospel for at at least a few minutes a day can dramatically deepen your faith. Are you familiar with the gospel? I believe that you were brought to this video today for a reason. Let's take a moment to think about the gospel and what the religion of Christianity is all about. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that we all need a savior because of this. Romans 3.23 Because of this, God sent his one and only son to us to be the atonement for our sins. As it says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, in Malachi 3 to 6 God says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. He has always required a blood sacrifice for the atonement of sins. He says this in Leviticus 17 11, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. He also repeats this in the New Testament when he says in Hebrews 9.22, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why Jesus, God in the flesh, had to come into the world and live under the law, which are the Ten Commandments, to redeem those who were under the law. Have you obeyed the entire law of the Lord? Have you ever stolen anything, even if it was small? Have you ever lied? Have you ever not kept Sunday as a day of rest and worship of the Lord? Have you ever looked with lust at another person that you were not married to or done physical things with a person you were not married to. Have you ever desired something that your friend or neighbor had that didn't belong to you? To be honest, it's easy to break these laws because our nature is inclined to sin. The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. However, it says in 1 St. John 1-8 and 9, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a merciful and loving God we serve. Because God loves us so much, in Isaiah 53, 10, it says, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush Jesus when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. He conquered sin and death, and because he rose from the dead, he promises to raise us from the dead after we die too. 
This is the glorious gospel. The next step after a person has received the gospel is to go to RCIA at your local Catholic church. You can search for the nearest church on Google and call them to see when the next classes start. If they don't start for some months, you can still meet with the director and get some books to read to tie you over before it starts. I will be praying for you about all of this. This is the road to eternal life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other videos about inspiring saints. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video. Make sure to check out the links below in the description so you can grab your We Are Saintly Catholic t-shirt and be a part of our We Are Saintly Catholic community by signing up for our email list and joining us on Patreon. I give you free saint printables each month, a free We Are Saintly shirt each year, shoutouts, and more in Patreon as a special thank you for being a part of this amazing Catholic community. Are you considering taking a Catholic pill pilgrimage to honor St. John Chrysostom after learning about him today. I've traveled to lots of places, and I'm well versed in the things you may need along the way, so I've compiled a list of links in the description below where you can find cheap flights, car rentals, destination packages, and more. Save this video so you have those links handy and visit our blog to learn about more holy saints that will ignite your faith. I sincerely hope that learning about the prayers of St. John Chrysostom has brought you a sense of comfort and tranquility. If you found this video to be beneficial, please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel. Always remember to keep the faith and believe in the power of prayer. May God bless you and provide you with guidance on your journey. Until we meet again, take care of yourself, keep going to church, reading your Bible, praying your rosary, and sharing the gospel. I'm praying for you in all of this.